and welcome to the Party Center Speaks podcast. This is the podcast for family entertainment centers and event venue owners, operators, managers, and staffers looking to grow their businesses. Want to learn about increasing booking parties, improving facility operations, and more? Well, this podcast is just for you. My name is Araceli Balcazar. And I'm the marketing and social media coordinator here at Party Center Software. In this episode, we're going to interview John, who's also part of our team here at Party Center Software. So John, tell me about yourself and who you are here at Party Center Software. Well, my name is John Radcliffe. I'm the Director of Product and Customer Experience here at PCS. What does that mean? Uh, it means I manage both the QA and the development team, but I also pay really close attention to the entire onboarding process. Um, my job doesn't just start and stop at the software. I really pay attention to the entire chain of events where a customer can be involved. Yeah, of course. And John also, you know, delivers the best products with his team, you know, to provide with our customers. And he's the reason, his team is the reason why we have all these amazing features to provide to our customers. So how did you get into the FEC industry in the first place? Uh, by taking this job, actually. Um, before I worked here, I worked in the digital ebook and music distribution space. So I was on the technology in there. I helped bring a couple of products to market. Um, I was really involved in that space as it was growing and starting to pick up a lot of speed. But ultimately, near the end, I was kind of looking to get out of it. Um, timing wise, Party Center Software just fell into my lap at the right time, uh, had the right need, had the right fit. Um, and it just, it just really worked out. It's been awesome. It's been a really, really good experience for me, uh, both learning what I learned in my previous jobs and being able to bring it directly over here in small ways, like going to the cloud, um, rolling out products, cr creating products over an existing system. Um, my kids also keep me involved in the FEC industry though. So I have two kids, five and seven. And there's probably not a month that goes by where I don't attend a birthday party. So it's kind of neat to constantly be able to reflect on the guest experience from my end, as well as kind of seeing how locations are ran and what they're doing and how they organize things. It really helps keep the FEC world front and center for me um, on a frequent basis. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, of course, one thing I love about this industry, like you said, it's just super family oriented. And like you said, you have kids of your own. So I'm sure they keep you up in there all the time. So yeah. how would you how would your friends and family describe what you do? Oh, they probably say something along the lines of uh, he manages developers and works with software. And I think they do online parties, something like that. Um, I think my parents or friends would struggle to go much deeper than that. I think most of my friends and family have a good idea of what I do and what my job is and what the company is, but I don't know if they could go much deeper than that. Right, right. And that's very like sweet of them to think that at least that they know you deliver products and that you're helping the software and that you're in the family entertainment industry. So that's great. And yeah, they, they know enough to ask me their technical questions. Kind yeah, of, of course. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Now, speaking about your role, what is the biggest challenge that you're facing right now and how are you necessarily tackling it? I would say, without a doubt, our biggest challenge from a technical side of Party Center Software is innovating over the existing system. Um, a lot of companies choose to leave legacy systems behind and the customers behind with those choices and go build something new. Um, I have not made that choice for a very strategic reason here at Party Center Software. I firmly believe that iterating over existing software is not as hard as many people make it out to be. Um, and it involves your customers in the process as soon as you launch something. And making the other choice of launching a brand new system and kind of taking the development team to go build something and create it and then launch it all at once also has a tremendous amount of risk. How do you migrate customers over? There's pros and cons on both sides, but with the size of our company, the size of our team um, and how people use our software, I believe very firmly that it's much better to iterate over the top of it. Meaning those core systems that we're launching or the new features that we're releasing, the core system also has to be upgraded with it. So a good example of this would be the membership system we recently released. Well. A long time ago, I wanted to build a membership system, but 
the way that we wanted to create the membership feature, it was impossible to build over the classic system. I had to reinvent and add more pre prerequisites in order to get us there. Uh, so for, for example, we had to recreate the customer profile page. We had to recreate the customer profile section in the database. We had to go back and reinvent that so we could build on top of it. Mm -hmm. And so for us, we're constantly making choices on the development side. Is this a feature that can be inserted into the existing technology or do we need to change the core systems behind it to not be in a bad place two years from now? Is it going to be something that we continue to iterate on top of or is it going to be something that we're just gonna have to completely gut and rework. So for me, that is the most difficult part of my job is making those choices. Uh, and it usually comes down to data on what we see on production, what people are using, uh, how many people are using it and how difficult it's gonna be. But in many cases, um, we don't have a choice because if we continue to build new features on top of the classic system, a lot of those features are very limited in what they can do because the classic code is not as flexible um, as the newer code that we've been creating. Well, thank you for sharing that. I could see how that could be a challenge, but I honestly just admire just the way that you tackle on these projects and honestly, the way that you pivot to different directions whenever you do find an issue, I genuinely do admire that. So thank you for that. Thanks. Now let's shift gears to our features. With every single feature we offer to our party center community, which one do you think they could benefit most from? Oh, I'm gonna speak from two angles on this one. One is a dad and, and, and someone that takes their kids to these locations and the other one as just seeing what people are using in the system. Um, my answer is digital waivers and gift cards, specifically PCS gift cards. So. Personally, it's hard for me to believe how many locations are still using physical waivers. Um, where was I? I was I went to a really cute little gymnastics place the other week with my daughter and we're sitting there in line. And I'm in line and there's a big QR code on the wall and it says scan this and sign a waiver before coming to the front desk. And I mean, when I say big, I mean, they had a huge sign there, so nobody would miss it. Yeah, and sure. everyone's everyone's in line, they're scanning with their phone, they're doing the QR code thing. Um, and by the time they got to the front, the 30 kids that were there for the birthday party, everyone had their waiver signed, maybe one or two people missed it, but it was easily, you know, remedied. Mm -hmm. um, and it just made for a really smooth entrance and made for a quick signing for me, I got a copy to my inbox and they could easily see that I had signed it when I got to the front desk. So, okay, you know, my daughter got to go in right away. If you're doing a physical waiver, you don't get the waiver until you get to the front of the desk. Then you have to take the clipboard or whatever else it is and sign it. You have to kind of read it. It's a little bit more difficult to quickly consume that. So you feel rushed to just sign it. And do I need to add my kid's name? Yes or no. And then turn it in. And then the, the location has to keep that waiver on file. Right. So I, it's hard for me to understand why people are still using physical waivers in a lot of ways. I think it's great to keep it as a backup, but the price point of our waivers and how fast it can make for people coming in and the convenience to the overall guest, that's one I really feel like a lot of more people could take advantage of, um, especially with our waivers and the QR codes and the way that we've kind of designed it um, can really speed things up. So the other side of that is gift cards. Um, gift cards are... And let me be more specific, digital gift cards. Because for me, again, uh, speaking as a dad on this topic, um, mm -hmm. I don't want to have to keep adding gift cards to my wallet. They're, they take up space. I only have a limited amount of cards in there. Uh, and so if I can get a digital gift card, which again, we offer in my mobile wallet or just start in my email and it's it's got a QR code or a barcode that I can just scan. You know, now we're talking, that really makes my life a lot easier as the consumer. And I think if you want things to sell or, or resell, always taking convenience into account is a big point of that. So for me, I look at it as the digital waivers and gift cards, because as a guest, I feel like those ones benefit me the most. And right. I often see some of our locations not enabling those features out of the gate. They wait on those and they, they wait and they wait and they wait. Um, but I think it should always be incorporated directly into the workflow that you start building from the get go. No, yeah, I definitely agree with what you said, with just convenience and just, you know, just time saving, you know, you want your customers in and out, 
you know, as easy as possible, like having their customer experience just great and no complaints. So I definitely think with digital waivers, you know, you get them right, you can get them right before they enter the door on your website. Yeah. So that's yeah. super important. And, you know, with me creating websites for our FEC customers, I've noticed that's really helpful to add, you know, a digital waivers button and have those waivers even signed even before they walk into your facility. So I think that's definitely, I agree with that for sure. Well, and there's one more point on that too, which is, the digital gift card aspect of it, um, having a physical card is great. And there's going to be a lot of people that want those. Right. But you got to buy the cards. You got to reorder the cards. Yep, you got to make sure cost. your logo looks great on it. It's mm -hmm. another cost you could run out. And so by not only adding the gift card program and probably keeping some physical cards on file uh, or on, on, on the location in order to sell them, uh, Digital gift cards will get you a lot, a lot of trouble. You can ask if they want the digital or the or the physical. Uh, and if you don't have any physical cards left, you can keep selling the digital ones uh, and send it directly to people's inbox. And there's lots of nice advantages too. You can look up the customer. You can look up the order. You can resend the digital gift card after the fact. You can still reload it. Right. So anyways, I feel like there's more advantages there that people don't often either realize or uh, peel back the feature enough to fully explore. No, yeah, for sure. And I feel like each of our features have benefits, you know, but I definitely agree that digital waivers and those gift cards, you have to get them in there. And I honestly believe that a lot of our FEC customers sometimes forget and they just, you know, go for the online booking, which is great, but we don't, don't want to forget all these other features that are helpful and that will, yeah. you know, increase revenue. Um, and now speaking about our other features, like you said, our newest features, memberships. Could you tell me a little bit how customers could benefit from memberships? Sure. So... Memberships as we built it to back up for a second, um, anything that we're building that is a new feature, uh, we try to think of it as a, a minimum viable product. So not something that's completely done and buttoned up perfectly tight. We're never going to come back to it. Right. What can I push across the finish line that is going to provide value and be user friendly and useful out of the gate and then how people use it can influence how we can develop on top of that to continue to improve it and make it better. Memberships is kind of a big one. So personally, I really feel like everyone should attempt to create a membership program if it works out. It doesn't work for every location, doesn't work for all businesses, but exploring it and I think trying to launch a membership program will help FECs challenge what they're selling and how they're selling it and look at it from a different way. So let me be a little more clear. Um, memberships add an additional cash flow, right? They bring in monthly revenue or yearly revenue, and that is definitely something to be considered. Mm -hmm. But the other side of that coin is what are you offering that the customer is willing to pay? And how often are they coming back? How often are they renewing? Are they signing up and then canceling? Um, you know, again, as someone on in this world with my kids, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of things that will lead me towards, oh, maybe I should get a membership here. Um, first, like, can I bring my kids and are they going to be active there? Is it going to be a place that they can play either indoors or outdoors and ex expel energy? Usually, universally, the answer is usually yes. Even if it's an arcade, right. kids don't walk from game to game. Um is it safe? Is it clean? Is the staff friendly, right? That's also part of my decision process there. Um, do they enjoy it? Not just do I enjoy the experience as a parent going to that location, but do my kids? Um, do they want to go back? Are they asking, can we go play there? Can we go do this again? You know, it took them to a trampoline park and they, they had a blast. They didn't want to leave. Right. Um, and I could easily see them having that much fun every time we go back. So for me, it's not just about adding a program as a different cash flow, which again, this feature is incro incorporated into our base offering. Um, it's about trying as I think an FEC to create a membership system that gives you information about what your customers want and what they're willing to pay for. And is it growing or are people canceling? And that can give you a lot of insight into how you're operating. Um, and you combine that with the ability to do like surveys and feedback, which you can do through our um, marketing suite, you know, now you're really, now you're really cooking with gas. You can really get a lot of information that can directly impact revenue in a positive way and allow you to continue to tweak your business and get critical information that sometimes is very difficult to extrapolate 
if you're just kind of running the same parties or the same kind of thing every every week and month. No, yeah, and I agree. And I definitely feel that, like you said, not every single facility location can benefit from these memberships. But if you can, I think it's a great way just to keep your customers keep coming in in your door frequently. So I think that's just the best way to do it because, you know, you can offer a ticket once, but, you know, if a customer wants to come back, they don't want to keep paying that same fee and fee. So if there's just one consistent fee of, you know, yearly summer membership. I think that'd be great just to keep, you know, those customers keep coming in through that door. So yeah. I think that's great. Yeah. And, then, and there's also, there's also more to be said for just re-looking at what you're offering. And I think that that is difficult to criticize if you're operating your business every single day and to think, well, I need to offer a new product. And uh, is it the value that people want? And and how much are they actually willing to pay for it? We've had a couple locations that have turned on memberships on a whim. And they're, they're selling so many. It's really, really cool to see the data because um, you know we do take a look at that, at the engagement of features and what we roll out. So for the, the locations that are doing it, we've seen them start small, one package that they offer, a single easy price point, um, and it either kind of takes off or it doesn't, and then they tweak it from there. And I, I just think that there's a lot of opportunity uh, to bring in more business for all of our locations, which we, which we want to see. No, for sure. And I definitely feel like you said they should start small and if it works, you know, keep tweaking it. And if it doesn't, you know, just take it away. And I think that's yeah. a great way to look at it. It's a great way just to start, just, you just start, just get in there and start. And then if it doesn't work, keep tweaking it and offer more membership. So I think that's a great way to look at it. Yeah. yeah so now what's your goal for this year? There's always a million things I wish I could tackle sure. <laughs> and, and I wish I could do. Um, if I could quadruple the size of my development team, I would. Um, right now, our top priority is reworking our current point of sale. Um, our point, our, our classic point of sale, as I refer to it, gets the job done, uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't have good responsiveness for different resolutions. Uh, I think that the speed, which is very critical in a point of sale, uh, could be improved and the overall usability of it, especially not taking up the full screen size. So I'm looking at the point of sale. Um, we're, we're waist into it, right? Waist deep into it right now. Uh, we're really excited about what we're building and we're constantly looking for ways to improve the system. And the point of sale is one of those that can take us forward and, I think allow our customers, more of our customers to use our point of sale, which can further reduce their costs. There are some, some blocking issues that some of our customers have mentioned about why they can't use our point of sale. For example, if they're using a, a small hot kitchen and they need table assignment, or if they're looking to have a better interaction between note capturing and the kitchen or someone else that's using a second printer. Mm -hmm. um, those are all things that in the current classic point of sale will be very difficult for me to build on top of. But if I rework it with those features and ideas in mind, well, now we've made room for it. Now we know how it's going to work out. And so just like with memberships where I know what phase two, three, four, and five could look like, uh, I know the same thing about the point of sale. So for me, I'm looking at modifiers. I'm looking at kitchen print systems. I'm looking at table assignment. I'm looking at speed. I'm looking at usability for different profiles. So someone using it on a tablet versus using it on a front desk versus someone using a snack bar and just trying to make it as flexible as possible. So ultimately the locations that are using a competitor's uh, point of sale could maybe cut that cost and switch to ours and continue to use our suite, which is very competitive for pricing when you incorporate all the features rather than piecemealing it out, waivers with one person and point of sale with another and then online booking with us. Um, and ultimately, where I'm going with these features that we're choosing to prioritize is capacity. Um, right. Capacity in the way that I envision it is going to turn the scheduling system on its head uh, that we currently have. I need to kind of almost take something that's two-dimensional and create three-dimensional. But in order for me to do that, I have to replace these systems that are associated with it, right? The customer page is, is associated. The scheduling system is associated. The online booking is associated. Waivers are even connected with that. Um, and the point of sale is a very big piece of that. There's more that we're going to want to do, for example, like selling a ticket. Well, you have to have nested decision-making when you sell a ticket. I need this ticket at this time for this many people. 
And that over the classic point of sale would be very cumbersome and very difficult to implement. But over the new one, let's do it. Let's knock it out. We understand how that technology is going to scale with both the database and with the UI that we've created. So right. uh, I'm excited about the point of sale. I can't wait to get that out. I think people are really going to love it. Um, and again, it's a first iteration. So there's a lot more that we can do with it and how we weigh where we're going to go is a, a multi-part decision. How much of the classic system has to be updated regarding whatever feature requests we get, uh, do the new features relate to capacity? If so, how, and how much would have to be replaced in order to get there? And then just overall usability. You know, we yeah. really want to create things that are easy. Now, one last topic or one last aspect of this topic. Um, when we create features, and this is a big goal for this year, and it was for one for last year too, mm -hmm. pushing new features that we're really excited about onto our customers can be very disruptive. Right. Uh, so if you're managing a location, you've got 15 employees and they all work different shifts and you can't be there every waking moment. And I decide to push out the new point of sale and we give you guys an email notice about it, but we just turn it on for everybody. Right. <laughs> that would be so disruptive to a lot of locations, a lot of staff, uh, not sure what to do. Sure. So we, we work hard at allowing the features to be enabled by our customers when they're ready. And I think that this is something I feel very strongly about that when we push changes down, we're trying to not be disruptive to business as much as we can. Obviously, all change is disruptive and we do need to sunset the classic system eventually, but piecemealing out the changes and allowing our customers to turn it on when they're ready leads to sometimes a slower adoption rate, but I feel like a much more successful rate in terms of getting customers to stick with it. Um, there's no point in us ripping the bandaid off our customers if it just frustrates them and slows down their business, which ultimately affects their, their, um, their income. So that's another aspect of one of our goals that we we've really been looking at since reinventing and building new is how can we do this? How can we allow the two systems data to continue to be used? So if I turn on the new point of sale, everything works great. If I turn it off, the old one still continues to work. Um, memberships is kind of like that. The new customer page is kind of like that. Um, there's certain aspects where you can't go back. For example, if you turn on memberships, you can't go backwards to the classic right. system because we have now new data structures that can't be deleted. But uh, as much as we possibly can, I'm thinking through that when we develop a new feature and, and how it's going to affect our customer and how we're going to roll it out. No, yeah, of course. And thanks for sharing that. And I just, again, I, I would say I admire your dedication and leadership that you bring with your team. And I'm sure that with any features and adoptions, your team will achieve it. And, you know, we're all on one team. And I think that's just great. And our customers are going to be super excited about that. So that's great. Well, alrighty. Well, thank you, John, for being on this week's episode. And I hope the tips shared today were helpful. If you have any feedback or have any topics you'd like to discuss with us, please be sure to email marketing at partycentersoftware.com. This podcast is a weekly podcast, so make sure to tune in every Thursday. Party Center Speaks is powered by Party Center Software. We are a facility management tool that helps family entertainment centers and event venues book more parties and manage their facilities. We also offer marketing services, such as custom website design and marketing automations to help you expand your reach and grow traffic. If you'd like to know more about us, please head over to partycentersoftware.com. And please be sure to also give us a follow at Party Center Software on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and at Party Center Software on Twitter. Until next time, and thanks for listening.